normally there's not a ton to take from spring scrimmages, but I do think we're going to get a pretty good idea of what Corey Batoon's defense is going to look like come this fall. I'll explain why coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, a 05 Mizzou J School graduate, decades long season ticket holder, and the host of the Locked On Mizzou podcast. And on today's show, going to be talking about Tamar Bates, who said yesterday that he is 100% coming back next year. But on the negative side of the equation, I think a, a bit of news that just broke, not involving Missouri, makes Dennis Gates' seat a little bit hotter next year. First, I, I do want to remind all of you that today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. And again, black and gold game here Saturday, 1 o'clock, SEC Network, maybe ESPN Plus, that whole deal if you can attend. Looks like it's going to be nice weather, though. I'm going to try to get out there myself. In fact, I'm definitely going to be out there. I'm going to skip tomorrow's usual Friday program, give you a Saturday show talking about the black and gold game. Look forward to that, to that here in a couple days. But I'll, I'll tell you this, even though there's not usually – you don't want to overanalyze – an intra-squad scrimmage, that's for darn sure. But I will tell you, the last time Missouri played one of these things in front of the public, we did learn something, and that was that Cody Schrader was a real player. Yeah, we didn't know that coming out of the black and gold game, he was going to be the sixth leading vote-getter for the Heisman Trophy eventually. I think that would have been quite the statement for somebody per to predict. But if somebody would have predicted that, hey, this Cody Schrader kid, he's going to be a significant contributor for Missouri, well, that wouldn't have been crazy at all because you saw it in the black and gold game. There was just something different about the guy, despite the fact that he was going against mostly backups, obviously even third, fourth type stringers in that game. Well, there was something that you could glean there. So look for observations. That's what I'm going to do, but we're also going to try to not overanalyze stuff too. A tough balance there, but darn it, that's why I'm here. But what I'm really going to be looking for, at least who knows what'll come, but what I'm really going to be looking for is the defensive side of the ball for Missouri. Of course, a new defensive coordinator in Corey Batoon. Missouri mi missing a, a bunch of really productive players, obviously. Darius Robinson, Tyron Hopper, and the two corners, Ennis Rakestraw and Chris Abrams Drain. So one thing I'm wondering is, will Missouri play as much press man-to-man -man coverage this season? Will they play as much single high safety as they did the last couple years under Blake Baker? Will Corey Batoon be as aggressive defensively? Now, I'm not expecting as many blitzes or certainly as many exotic and unusual blitzes that you might see in during a, a regular season SEC game. Obviously, you're expecting vanilla coverages, vanilla blitzes, all that kind of stuff. But I do think that Corey Batoon's general philosophy about what type of shell defense, the base type of defense and coverages he's going to want to play for Missouri will be on display on Saturday. So I can't wait to see it. Going to be curious to see how this joker defensive end, edge rusher, linebacker, hybrid type player might be used. Is this going to be Johnny Walker standing up in a two-point stance? Is he going to have his hand in the ground more often than, that, than, than not? Just going to be interesting to see. And also, we should get a decent look at Aiden Glover as well. The true freshman enrolled early. Listen, we, we know we're getting out of Brady Cook at this point. We don't want anybody to get hurt. Obviously, he's got the don't touch me, bro jersey on anyway. But Aiden Glover, obviously... 
He's been called developmental is the word that I've seen thrown around about Aiden Glover a lot, the the freshman from Tennessee. Well, we'll see what happens. It'll just be interesting to see what kind of skill set he can display at this level on Saturday. Those are the two main things I'm going to be looking for. And one thing that does amuse me, by the way, always about these black and gold games, says something about human nature and certainly football fan nature is – Obviously, it's a little bit tough to figure out, well, that was a 30-yard gain. Okay, good. Does that mean our offense is good or our defense is bad? Well, you'll notice pretty quickly that the fans, the lion's share of them anyway, will default to cheering for the offense. It's just how people are. We like seeing points on the board. So even in the spring game, we still cheer for the offense over the defense of Missouri, which is kind of interesting. And by the way, speaking of Cody Schrader, obviously that young man is not on the team for 2024. His time with the Tigers has come to an end. But if Missouri has a, another great season, a really memorable season once again, maybe even reaching higher heights in 24 or in the future, I think Cody Schrader's name is going to be brought up a ton in the future and given a lot of credit. Listening to Curtis Looper, the running backs coach, yesterday, I'm just going to read this quote to you. He said, I think it's abundantly clear to everyone that we will play the best. Cody came and he was the eighth tailback when he got here and ended up starting the first game about eight months later. So any notion that we will do anything different than that is out the window. So I think if they know that, then they know they all have a legit shot. So you just have to be the best. If you're the best, you're going to play. It's a production-based business, end quote. And I, I love that quote from Curtis Looper, and I think that's absolutely true. It's one thing every program says exactly that. Hey, we don't care. When you get on campus, whether you're five-star or you're a walk-on, you all get the same same chance to play, blah, blah, blah. And to some extent, that is true. But of course, as Jimmy Johnson sort of said, and I'm probably going to bungle this, this paraphrasing of his quote here, but basically, yeah, everybody goes by the same rules, but uh, not everybody has the same rules, that type of deal. So in other words, I'm going to treat Emmett Smith a little bit more different than the backup long snapper, that type of deal. So it does say something, though, for the Missouri culture, specifically Eli Drinkwitz and the culture that he's built at Missouri to be able to point at Cody Schrader every single day and say, this is what you can be on this program. Tell it to the guys on the scout team and tell it to them with a straight face. Listen, we're, we're not holding you back. We'll give you every opportunity because, frankly, well, for one thing at Missouri, you have to. You don't have the, the luxury of just going, well, we've got all these five-star guys. You wait your turn. So don't get me wrong. Drinkwitz and company have raised the level, the floor of talent, high school talent coming in at Missouri, all that good stuff. But I don't know. I just thought that was an interesting quote from Curtis Looper and shows that Cody Schrader's impact, I think, will be felt at Missouri for years to come. And on the basketball side, of course, mercifully, the yes, this season is finally and officially over. Oh, and 19, the imperfect streak is intact. Dennis Gates, you are indeed the anti-Don Drysdale. But some good news for Dennis Gates in basketball. Tamar Bates announced yesterday, well, just said, maybe not announced, maybe that's the wrong word, but he said to a reporter yesterday that he is 100% coming back next year. Obviously, that's good news, but also coming up, I'm going to tell you why I think Jerry Stackhouse being let go at Vanderbilt actually makes Dennis Gates' seat a little bit warmer. I'll explain to you why. Those two events, I believe, are somewhat related. But first, I want to tell you about Nissan, because this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. 
just like all of these new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. And the Houston Cougars this season can only be described as a Nissan Armada. This top team in the Ken Palm efficiency rankings, well, they're about as hardcore as you can get. So it's no wonder that they're expected to land the top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. Truly, that is one heck of a defense and one heck of an automobile in the Armada. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Mark your calendar for the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show Monday, March 18th at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown on Monday on the college, the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. And speaking of college basketball, let's talk a little Mizzou hoops right now. Tamar Bates, according to the man himself, is is coming back next season. Drew Drew King of Power Mizzou caught up with with him after the game got that answer from Bates after well it sounded like a little bit of waffling at the beginning of this quote here but the last few sentences this is where the money is he says quote but there's like no doubt that I'm coming back yeah I would never leave especially after like I said these relationships are real and you know we're definitely going to have something to prove so I'll be 100% I'll 100% be back So that's kind of all I need to hear there, and that's great news for Dennis Gates and Missouri, obviously. 0-19, what more needs to be said? But despite that fact, it's clear to me that Tamar Bates was not the problem. He can be a part of a very good basketball team. In fact, Bates was the sixth best free throw shooter in the entire country this year at over 92%. He also was a really above average three-point shooter and slasher as well, played hard defensively. Honestly, what more could we have possibly expected from Bates in his junior year this season? Honestly, run that back. Give me that exact production for his senior season next year, and I will be perfectly happy. If we can just build some more productive players like Bates around him, well, we'll be in pretty good shape. It's not as though Missouri had no good players on this team. We frankly just didn't have enough. And you know what? Hopefully Dennis Gates will turn this around. I still have faith that it can happen. Certainly my faith has been dinged a lot from this past offseason. This past offseason, I've told you, that Missouri finishing last would have been impossible, much less going 0-19. But here's the deal. After Here's some breaking news that happened just before I started recording this podcast. According to CBS Sports, Vanderbilt is working towards severing its ties with Jerry Stackhouse, its head coach, and that firing should be formal soon. And although... The terms of Stackhouse's, again, this is according to CBS Sports, the terms of Stackhouse's buyout are not publicly known, but are believed to be north of $15 million. Now, that's what's key here. This is why this is important for Dennis Gates and Missouri. Next season, if Missouri were to do something similar and decide they wanted to move on from Dennis Gates for whatever reason, Well, there's a big buyout there of $17 million because Missouri is a public institution, unlike the private Vanderbilt. We know what his buyout is. It's 17 million bucks. And I had previously assumed that that would be, if not impossible, a really, really steep hill to climb for Missouri to, that's just a big, big wad of money to swallow if you're any athletic department especially on the basketball side. Again, for context, so far, the second highest buyout in college football history was something like $21 million. That was Auburn and Gus Malzahn. Now, of course, 
Recently, Jimbo Fisher got seventy plus million dollars from Texas A and M. So obviously, if Vanderbilt is willing to pay reportedly north of fifteen million dollars to buy out its basketball coach, Vanderbilt, really? If that's possible, then obviously Missouri, who has gotten some big time gifts lately from donors, the, the biggest ever, and also. You know, Missouri's been a big player in terms of name, image, and likeness. All that is to say is it's getting a lot more easy to believe that, yeah, if it goes really, really horrifically wrong again next year for Missouri basketball, there's probably somebody out there in Columbia, in Missouri, somewhere out there is a Mizzou fan who is willing to write a $17 million check. As hard as that is to believe, I don't know if it's because Bitcoin is over 70000 or what it is, but there is a lot of money swishing around college sports right now. So my point is, while I had previously believed that that buyout would be incre- incredibly prohibitive to Missouri potentially moving on from Gates next season, well, with this Vanderbilt and Stackhouse news, I'm starting to believe anything is possible. It's all on the table, I would say. Now, the reality is, as a sports fan, as the years go by, as the seasons go by, most of the seasons all kind of run together a little bit. But I'll tell you this, we're going to be telling our grandkids about this Missouri basketball team, but of course, for all the wrong reasons. And if that finish, well, I should say that finish of the ball game yesterday against Georgia would have truly been beyond belief if I had not personally witnessed the rest of this season. Missouri led 59-52 with three and a half minutes left and somehow did not score a single point to close out the rest of the game. So, of course, the rest of the, the, rest of the season, Missouri's been in, unable to get a stop when it matters. So if you're unable to make a clutch shot whatsoever, no matter how many attempts you get at it, well, there you go. There's your season for you right there. That's how you get to 0 and 19 and at halftime I was amused when Mike White said I really like our looks offensively and I thought wow you could have put that quote under every 2023-24 Mizzou opposing offensive coach now I will say on on the positive side for Missouri again another nice game from Connor Vanover season high minutes possibly points and rebounds as well. And I thought he really made a difference tonight and certainly bothered Oscar Shewe, but even before he turned his ankle in the game, it just seemed like his size and length just was a big time difference maker because Shewe was definitely a difference maker in Columbia when the dogs took down the Tigers in the first go round. So Also, by the way, we could have made Connor Vanover. He could have even had a better game, in my opinion. We could have made his life a little bit easier with some decent post entries. Sean East sure loves to float that ball up in the air. I know he likes to play Papa Shot, but maybe the Papa Shot pass needs to be rethought of a little bit. Also, the zone defense, ineffective as usual. And the biggest thing that bothered me down the stretch is that Missouri kept running every single bulldog off of the three-point line as if they were Blue Cane, the the Georgia the Georgia shooter there. But really, Blue Cane was the only Georgia bulldog that I was actually worried about shooting a three. So time and time again, Missouri would be worried about running other players off the line only to then get out of position defensively and then allowing Blue Kane a wide open look on the back end of the play. Blue, you are not my boy whatsoever. Not last night, anyway. I will promise you that. By the way, Nick Honor, 6 of 29 in his last two games. And again, if he, that's your off ball three point shooter there compared to Blue Kane, not really a comparison. You think we miss Caleb Grill now? Yeah, I think it's a pretty good indication right there. And I've talked a lot on this program about the transfers who came in for Missouri that maybe didn't quite work out this year, to say the least. But what about one player that Dennis Gates was apparently willing to let leave his roster last season, Mohamed Diara, that has been a really productive player for NC State. 
this past season. Let's check in on Moe's game and how he's been faring away from the Tigers. But first, you know what I love about the Amazon Fire TV? I can plug it in just about anywhere in the world. Take it with me in my, my suitcase. I've got my TV set up for vacation anywhere I am. Well, Fire TV is also your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with Fire Smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Well, Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to, to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, Gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. And by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, the NC State Wolfpack are probably going to have to win the ACC tournament if they're going to make the NCAAs, if they're going to make March Madness this year. But I bet Mohamed Diara probably had a lot more fun in Raleigh this season than he would have had in Columbia this year. But I do wonder, was it's been an open question, why did Diara go to NC State? Was it simply to be closer to home? Maybe there's a direct flight from Raleigh to Paris. I had heard that before. Maybe that was 100% the reason. Maybe Dennis Gates was willing to let Mohamed Diara go. Maybe he wasn't so sad to see him go, perhaps. that Well, you'll just have to ask Dennis Gates. Maybe that'll be up to you. But the point is, I think, if Diara had stuck around, Missouri certainly would have benefited from his presence. I noticed that, well, like I said, the Wolfpack going to have to win the ACC tournament. Well, they got their second win in said tournament just yesterday. And in that game, Diara had a really impressive stat line. Eight points, 14 rebounds, six assists, two steals in the Wolfpack's victory over Syracuse. And I'll be honest, I didn't watch one solitary second of Mohamed Diara play basketball for NC State this season. But the following things that I'm about to tell you are facts. He made 35% of his three-pointers this year, 53% of his twos, and he had, are you ready for this, the fourth best defensive rebounding rate in the entire country. Missouri, possibly the worst 
rebounding team in the entire country certainly could have used that. And by the way, Diara, again, this is these are all just facts. You can quibble with all of these stats all you want, but this remains true. He had a better offensive rating than both Tamar Bates and Sean East. So yes, again, quibble with those numbers all you want. He's not the main offensive option like Sean East. He's not getting all the the offensive attention. He's taking closer shots at the rim more often than not, fine and dandy. But again, would Mohamed Diara have been a helpful member of the Missouri basketball team this year? I think that pretty much answers itself. Now, one more thing on luck, at least statistical luck for Missouri, just to close out this season. As I've said this entire time, I'm not trying to let Missouri off the hook at all. They're losing these games, these close games, for a reason. Just like there was a reason in the previous season that Missouri was executing so well offensively down the stretch. There were reasons they were winning those close games too. But I will say this. For Missouri to go from the luck rating, which again, could could maybe more accurately be called variance, but to go from Ken Palm's luck ranking last year, 10th in the country, all the way down to dead last, 362nd out of 362 teams, and by a significant margin, they're in dead last too. See, that's the other thing. Mount St. Mary's is 361. Well, you look at the difference between Missouri's luck and Mount St. Mary's luck. Well, there is a 19 hundredths of a point difference there. Whereas most of, if you look at just one slot difference, it's usually one or two, perhaps three thousandths of a difference, but no 19 hundredths. So we're talking like 10 times as big of a gap there between dead last and the penultimate, the second to dead last Mount St. Mary's just a 10 times a bigger gap than you would expect to see in any other spot in these rankings. For instance, you go up to the top and yes, you do see a similar gap, but at the bottom, there is basically no gap whatsoever. So Missouri, not only were they unlucky, you could say, or had the worst variance, if you will, the fact that they were the worst by a country mile kind of tells you all you need to know. It was unbelievable at a certain point last night when Missouri had multiple shots at the rim, tip-ins, wide-open three-pointers that just would not go in. And basically, that was the story of the entire season there, those last three and a half minutes or so. So unfortunately, a really bad Missouri season. All I can say is I, I'm proud of these guys that they played hard and stayed together and all that stuff. And, you know, it's going to sound corny, but these guys are not losers. I, I, I'll say that. Even though they lost a lot. This does not define any of these guys as young men. So I will say that. I thought the way that they handled themselves was admirable. But bottom line is Missouri has got to get better at basketball next season or else, you know what? That 17 million bucks that I thought was going to be a real prohibitive barrier to getting rid of Dennis Gates potentially next year. Looking like that's a lot more likely these days than it did just a little while ago. So with all that being said, thanks for joining me here on the podcast. As always, thanks for making this show your first listen every day. By the way, again, no show tomorrow. I'll see you all Saturday post-spring game right here on Locked on Mizzou.